Hey everyone. So I know things have been a little slow in terms of AI video generation, but that doesn't mean that cool things aren't happening. And I know that a lot of us feel like we're in a holding pattern as, you know, obviously there have been the big announcements about Sora and Google's new VU. And I still think that those are a little further out than we think they are. And I mean, who knows, Sam Altman may end up tweeting out some Sora generated clips of Scarlett Johansson as the Black Widow and, you know, push the whole thing back another six months. In the meantime, I do have two new cool AI video tools for you to check out. And both of them are free with an asterisk. Of course, there's an asterisk. Okay, let's dive in. First off, Crea.ai have released their video model. It is free, like all of their other tools, though, if you're on the free tier, you are limited to a certain amount of generations. That said, I have a paid plan, so I'm gonna run you through everything that I learned about it so you're not wasting time and burning through your free credits for the day. Now, the interesting thing with Crea Video is that it works by keyframing, which is something that we have not seen in AI video as of yet. I will say that it is less traditional animation keyframing and more like AI video blending. But you can get some really cool results out of it, as Mika Key does here. Uh, yeah, the results definitely do tend to lean towards the hypnotic and experimental side. But still, I mean, I think this is super awesome. Mickey Freeman puts together this really stunning clip of a nymph rising from the water and turning into a beautiful woman. Although it's kind of cool with Kriya, you can actually loop all of your clips so you can run this backwards and have it be a beautiful woman who turns into a nymph and goes underwater. My contribution leans more towards the photorealistic. This is a beautiful widow hanging out in dark woods who turns into a dragon, you know, as you do. So for our initial widow in the woods images, I ended up utilizing Leonardo.ai. Well, what's kind of funny is while I was working, they pushed out the new UI, which actually looks really pretty nice. Uh, we'll definitely dive into that next week. Uh, let me know if you want a full Leonardo.ai tutorial. So I then used that image as an image reference for our transition shot and then finally generated up the dragon. Once we had all three of those images, we just simply head over to Crea.ai, uh, come over to the video generation. To add a keyframe, we simply come down here to this timeline and uh, click on it, and then we can upload an image. So we'll start off with our first one, and then we can add in a text prompt. So for the text, I will put uh, um, a beautiful woman in the woods. Now I will say that you don't have to necessarily go too crazy with your prompts here. Uh, I did try sort of the longer, older style of prompting, and it didn't seem to really have any particular effect. For the second shot, you might think that you would want to bump up against the thumbnail of your initial shot, but that's not the case. Otherwise, you're only gonna end up with a half second long shot. So let's extend this out to two seconds here and add another keyframe. So once that's in, we can add a text prompt for this one. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, a beautiful woman in the woods bursting into flame. And finally, we'll repeat the process at around maybe the four and a half second mark here uh, with the image of our dragon. And we're just gonna say a dragon surrounded by flames for this. Um, now, in terms of timing, what you're actually looking at is not the thumbnail itself, but rather uh, your text prompt, which you can then extend out. Um, and that is actually where your transitions are going to occur. So once you have everything more or less placed where you want it to, you simply hit generate video uh, and you'll watch as this blue bar scrolls across as it renders. Now there is an important note that when this initially ends up generating across, what you're going to see at first is a low res version of this. You may or may not be happy with what you end up getting. So uh, it will immediately start enhancing. So I'm gonna show you in a second how to change things if you don't like what you're getting. So. Um, yeah, that's okay. But if you didn't like it, come over to this click to cancel on the enhance to save some GPU hours. Uh, the video will continue to play, although you are, it's obviously not generating right now and thus not accruing, you know, cost. Now, one of the tricks that I definitely learned is if you notice here, um, she begins transitioning into the dragon. That's far ahead of where we actually wanted that to occur. So what you can do here is just simply add a keyframe and go back to that initial image of her on fire again. It's almost like you're reminding Kriya that, you know, this is who the character is. I don't want to get there yet. And indeed, it now looks like it holds that second shot for a little longer. Now, you'll notice that by default, the last few frames do revert back to the first few frames, creating an infinite loop. Now, you can turn that setting off by coming over to this gear button. And down here on the bottom, you'll see a toggle switch for loop video, infinite or off. 
the thing is, is that uh, in my early experimentations today, when I tried to turn loop off, uh, it would fail in generation. So that seems like a bug. It'll hopefully be fixed by the time you're playing around with this. You can obviously also control the aspect ratio here. And then, you know, there's a slider for motion intensity. I should also mention that there is four uh, presets down here. We were on the film preset. There's also render, sort of a 3D rendering preset animation, which tends tend to lean a little bit on the anime side uh, and then experimental, which is weird. And just to give you an idea of how these various modes look, this is our dragon woman in the animation preset. And this is our dragon woman in the experimental preset. Uh, to be honest, I think that they all have their kind of quirks and qualities to them. And I know that not everyone is a big fan of kind of like this more like warpy kind of look, but to me, it's actually starting to become its own style. I think this is actually something that could be really well utilized in say a dream sequence or a music video. Now, in terms of character consistency, uh, I know that some of you are gonna be wondering about that. I did not have the greatest of luck here. Because Korea is diffusion based, at least I believe it is, it does tend to have that annoying habit of, you know, changing things per input. So quickly generating up two characters, once again, in Leonardo and using the new character consistency function uh, and then bringing them in. We, we just tended to end up with different characters as you change the pose. Once again, as I was experimenting around here, this is where actually pausing that enhancement came in really handy because as you sort of scrub through and see, you can tell by the low res version if you were on the right track or not. So, you know, coming over and pausing that enhancement was a good way of saving some, you know, credits. Now I will say that using the animation preset did seem to help in terms of like the overall character consistency. Uh, there are still some issues going on here, like with the decoherence in the clothes, like that kind of keeps changing, but I think her face more or less actually ends up staying the same. We'll see in just a second here as the enhancement kicks in. So yeah, it's not perfect and the hand does kind of have this like quick movement thing, but as sort of a test, it, it at least, if you're maybe aiming for a close up, it more or less looks like the same character. I think you could get away with it at least. That said, since Kriya doesn't excel in that direction, just lean into another. Uh, Heather Cooper put this piece together utilizing Kriya video. And I mean, this is really cool. It's an 18 second video. And while yes, I would not want to watch a feature film in this style, uh, I do think that this could be part of a really cool opening title sequence. Once again, Kriya is totally free and you can use the new video feature right now. I mean, granted, you are limited to a certain amount of free daily credits, but they do refresh daily. Uh, you know, obviously they do want you to upgrade to the basic plan, which I have, uh, you know, it's been fine. I haven't really run into many issues just sticking with that plan. Moving on, Pixverse, which we have looked at in the past before and are another one that has like daily free credits. Uh, well, they've introduced their new motion brush feature. And I'm pretty sure this is the only video generator outside of Runway that has a motion brush. Uh, I think at least, let me know if I'm wrong about that. Uh, so if you don't have a Runway subscription, this is your chance to try out motion brush. It also does two things differently from Runway, maybe more efficiently as well. Uh, let's start off with this image, once again, generated in Leonardo of a, I don't know, like steampunk femme fatale who definitely wants to see your papers before you get on that train. So swapping over to the image tab and dropping Natasha in here, um, all we have to do once she's loaded up is hit the magic brush button. So you'll notice that there's this auto select area uh, in which we can hit, you know, the person and that just auto masks that. Now it did miss the tie, but you'll notice that it actually categorized the tie as well. So if we just hit that, it'll add the tie onto that particular brush. Now runway will also auto select for you. It just tends to be a little more on the kind of segmented side, I guess. But where things do vary is that, uh, you know, obviously your brush controls down here on runway control the horizontal, vertical, you know, proximity and ambience. Over on the Pixverse side, we have the draw magic brush direction, which is something that we've actually seen in a white paper in the past. Um, basically, yeah, you have these arrows that you can draw that control your motion. So for brush two, we're gonna put the train in here and we're gonna put this going this way so that uh, hopefully the train moves. Let's change the sky to go in the opposite direction of the train. I think that might end up being a kind of a cool shot. And after a quick upscale, we end up with this. It's not bad. I mean, there are obviously the AI video problems, like her eye definitely goes kind of wibbly wobbly there and the train vanishes into a wormhole as it passes behind her. That's a fairly common AI video thing. 
But I do think that Pixverse is really capable of doing some really cool shots. For example, in this kind of like Tales from the Loop inspired shot of a giant robot standing in the middle of a city. The walk cycle on the character in the foreground looks very passable and there's some nice ambience that's happening in the atmosphere, you know, in the mid ground and background. Here's one fairly simple motion brush shot, obviously very much influenced by Pirates of the Caribbean. By the way, over the last couple of days, I have watched all five of them. Uh, the second one is actually much better than you remember it being. The less said about the fourth one, the better. But the auto selecting for the pirate boat made things actually super easy. Um, you know, you just hit boat. There were a couple of pieces missing. I did not bother rebrushing them in. Uh, I simply hit the magic brush direction and said, go that way. Now I'll say that you do run into coherency issues in PixFirst and really across all AI video generators when you start doing like character head turns as you know, Captain Jack here turns into kind of like sloth from the Goonies, I guess. But I think the face is really the only problem here. Uh, and I think that, that could easily be fixed by running it through a face swapper. But I think if you're shooting for sort of more basic shots like this kind of like Jenna Ortega in a wasteland apocalypse movie, uh, you know, you'll get some pretty decent results. Once again, Picks First is free. You get, well, 50 free credits per day. Um, but the standard plan is $5 a month, which I think makes it the cheapest of any of the paid video generators. In the meantime, let me know which of the Pirates movies did you think was the best and which one was the worst. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.